Hello dear friends, here we are, 40 nights with the Promise Consoler, and it's an opportunity for us in this day 9, yes, this is day 9, and we are here also live at Kardec Radio, and Kardec Radio now has an app free of charge, you can listen to us 24-7, yes, can you believe it? It's an opportunity for you and I to learn the spiritist science. Yes, we have programs seven days a week, and we now have streaming 24-7. It's an opportunity for all of us to be together. Today is day nine of the study of this series of articles written by Humberto de Campos through Chico Xavier, 40 Nights of unprecedented stories about Jesus and his um, incessant loving actions. Today, we are studying chapter 13 of the book Pontos e Contos, not yet in English, but this is about a surpresa do crente, the surprise of the believer. And we want to say hi to our community. Hello, Andrea and Sunshine. How are you? This is Friday night, and here we are. Friday night for us, for other friends around the world. It may be another time. Let us read this text and immerse ourselves into this therapeutic conversation. Shall we? Hello, Melissa. Hello, Danny and Erica. How are you? Shall we read it together? Let us be prepared. The Surprise of the Believer. The happy devotee experienced the sweet commotion of the celestial spectacle. More than the prospect of the divine plan, however, he saw ecstatic the Lord before him. He was crying, inebriated by joy. Yes, it was the master who stood there, flooding him with the spirit of joy and light. He felt compensated for all the torments of human life. He had forgotten thorns and stones, difficulties and pains. Wasn't he experiencing the supreme instant of accomplishment? Didn't he wait impatiently for the divine minute? He had sighed for many years for resting on the blessedness. He retracted to himself in the world, waiting that hour of immortality and beauty. He had fled from men renouncing the simplest pleasures. He had distanced himself from the contradictions of earthly existence. He had withdrawn from all his companions of humanity who remained possessed by illusion or evil, haunted by social upheavals of, the, of his time and afraid of complicating himself in the realm of responsibilities, he had taken refuge in the mystical sanctuary of worship. He then had awaited for the Lord who shone glorified before his eyes. Jesus came and greeted him. Oh, such manifestation of affection filled him with happiness. He felt more powerful and happier than all the princes of the world together. The Divine Master smiled and asked, Tell me, dear disciple, where did you, did you teach? Did you keep the teachings that I gave you? The believer took the right hand to the thorax with joy and replied, In the heart. The sublime friend said, Where have you sa saved my continued blessings of peace and mercy? And the man said, In the heart. 
What about the lights that I lit on your steps? I have them in my heart, said the devotee who was filled with joy. The master silenced for a moment and asked again, and the talents that I gave you? They remain with me, said the apprentice in the recesses of my soul. The Christ silenced, and after a long interval, he asked, he still inquired, Listen, where did you archive the faith, the God sin, the opportunities for sanctification, the hopes, and the infinite goods that have been delivered to you in my name? The disciple reaffirmed, reverent and humble. I deposited them in my heart, Lord. At this point, the moving dialogue broke off. Jesus fell silent in a veil of sublime melancholy that was visible in his face. The devotee lost his expression of initial beatitude. And noticing that the master was silent, he inquired, Divine Benefactor, may I from now on shelter myself in the unutterable peace of your grace? Since I have made the sacred deposit of your blessings in my heart, will I enjoy eternal rest in your garden of infinite love? The Master shook his head sadly and rebuked. Not yet. Work is the only tool that can build the palace of the legitimate home. For now, you would be an admirable and valuable where, well, here for the content, but incommunicable and useless. Go back to the earth. Live with the good and the bad, the just and the unjust, the ignorant and the wise the rich and the poor, distributing the goods that you store up. Return, my friend, return to the world from where you came and pass all the treasures you have kept in the sanctuary of the heart to the workshop of your hands. At that moment, the devotee in tears Notice that the Lord was withdrawing himself from the dist his distressed gaze. But before he observed that the Christ, though fully covered with intense light, carried in his handsome and compassionate hands the deep marks of the nails of the cross. The surprise of the believer. Are you surprised, believers? Yes? Mmm, it is quite surprising. Umberto de Campos brings to us the true Christ. The Christ that is truly innovative. He is truly the divine expression on the earth. And yet, what he brings to us is new. Because even for those who are believers like this man, we behave like him. Let me give you an example. Divaldo Franco, every place he goes, most often he brings messages from the beyond, like messages from Dr. Bezerra de Menezes. And Dr. Bezerra enchants our hearts. But the question is, are we listening to what he's saying? Because the message comes to us all the time. We're enchanted. But does it change ourselves? Does it improve our lives? Does it change our approach or not? That's exactly what Jesus is proposing to this man. And if he doesn't change, what's going to happen? We're going to have to come back in another reincarnation because this reincarnation is not going to suffice. Of course, we need many reincarnations, but the problem is that when we repeat the lesson we could have learned, like a good student. If we were just good students, 
We don't need to be excellent, good, paying attention, focused, diligent, fulfilling our duties. Instead of just mesmerizing ourselves with the beauty of the teachings, like the other day, I was with a friend reading one of these texts, and Mentor Joseph said, Vanessa, it's very beautiful to talk about charity. It's very beautiful to read about charity, because the text was talking about charity. But more beautiful is to stand up right now and go visit that person who is sick, give the passes, bring the flowers, etc., etc. And then I asked, but right now, right now. And then I relayed the message to my friend. My friend was very loving. And she said, no, sure, let's go. So it's very interesting because Divaldo Franco, like a wonderful messenger of the spirits, has been channeling messages. And we are asking, are our hands already calloused? Already marked up? by the efforts we're making to transform our lives? Or is it a beautiful, well-polished hand that doesn't represent much in the work, but I love Jesus in my heart, but I don't transfer that love to my hands to bring consolation, kindness to others. Friends, Hello, Seissa and Valeria, Lea Severo, Julio, how are you, Julio? Welcome, welcome, my friend. Cesar, Ana Dilson, Patricia and Tiago, welcome, friends, here we are. But this message for us is for us. Do you consider yourself? A disciple. Yesterday, we were discussing when Humberto de Campos brought to us this passage by Jesus when he said, I have many distant followers, but few close disciples, because the close disciples are the ones that really work. They sacrifice, they mold their lives. And again, Humberto de Campos from another angle, He's showing to us how Jesus is so kind. So kind. He doesn't even say the name of this person here. But he says, as a happy devotee, it's enough for Jesus to come and visit him when he is transitioning to the spiritual realm. He comes knowing. Do you think Jesus didn't know that this man was not practicing the teachings, of course. How many of us distance ourselves, ourselves from others, thinking that others are less worthy? And Jesus came for those who are sick. Like this happy devotee, he kept the treasures of the teachings of the Master for himself alone. Didn't multiply. How are we multiplying? Thank you, Julio, for your loving, kind words. Always, always. Hello, Publio. Exactly. Leia Severi is saying, step by step, trying every day to transform. You're right. Hello, Monica, Daniel Castellani there, Aidan, how are you? And beautiful Rihanna, too. Friends, let us go back to some parts and recall ourselves. Jesus brings the teachings that if it were somebody else, because we love him already, we would be hurt. Imagine if you say, but I love you. And you say, yeah, but it's not enough to love. It's, you need to put it in action. But because we love Jesus, we read this text and we say, oh, so beautiful. But 
This man, he said he loves Jesus. Do we? But Jesus is a wonderful educator, a master, a guide, and model. He comes and says, he says to him, you cannot rest, you cannot come right now because work is the only tool that can build the palace of the legitimate home. Pause. What is this work? Everything Jesus says can be better understood with the light of discernment, which is spiritism. The light of discernment. It sheds light on this concept. What is this work? He doesn't mean work, uh, professional work. It's the definition given by the loving spirits in the spirits book by Kardec, which this year we're celebrating 160 years of its publication. It says, work is every useful occupation. So he says, Every useful occupation is the only tool that can build the palace of the legitimate home. Hmm. Every useful occupation. What is this? What is this? Every useful occupation. It's when we, every minute, I'm going to sit down and say, I'm so tired. Instead of throwing ourselves on the couch, throwing ourselves on a bed, throwing ourselves anywhere, even on the floor, on a hammock, on a plane, anywhere. Mind over matter, say, body, let's use this time wisely. You're going to rest, but I will continue my activities. That is mind over matter work. That's useful time. And you'll never feel guilty by resting. Because you're using that time wisely. You're giving a break to the body, because we need. The communication between body and peri-spirit that envelops the spirit can be too fatiguing. But when we put the body to rest, we make it consciously. How often do you put yourself to sleep or to rest consciously? Do you recall the last time you did that? Hmm? What? No, I don't. I put my baby to sleep. No, you put yourself to sleep. I need to learn how to put myself to sleep every night. How? Now, dear body, because the body is the most important asset that was given by God to us in an incarnation. It's the most adorable pet. As Andrea Louis says, the cells are little animals. Are we taking care of this big pet? These trillions of pets, adorable as they are, do we put them to sleep? Say, now nah, I'm going to put you to sleep. You're going to sleep. Or we're going to do a visualization. Or we're going to do a meditation. And you now, it's mind over matter work. And then you never feel guilty by resting again. Because you're leaving the body there. And you consciously fall asleep or go into a trance state for meditation, for uh, visualizations. And you continue the use of occupation of your time. Mm-hmm, that's the ultimate thing. After all, for the ones who are incarnated, it's an average of a third of our lives. If we don't know how to use well that third of our lives, which is when we are freer, spiritually speaking, we won't be able to manage wisely the other two-thirds of our lives, which is when we are awake through the senses of the physical body. So to maximize time management, and time management meaning 
making every possibility useful for our progress and the progress of humanity, I need to use my resting and recharging time wisely as a spirit. Andre Lewis, in the book Missionaries of the Light, chapters 5 and 8 especially, tells us about this other side. When incarnates can go to the spiritual realm and learn that lessons maximizing their activities in the physical realm. But that's an extension of what the good spirits like St. Augustine told Allan Kardec in the Spirit's book, chapter Sleep and Dreams, in the second part of the Spirit's book. His thesis of St. Augustine tells us that the wisest men and women who have incarnated on the earth use their sleep time wisely. So Jesus is saying, by working, we can build the palace of legitimate home. For now, believer, you would be an admirable and valuable well here for the content, but incommunicable and useless. How many of us are like this believer? Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, it's so beautiful. Okay, right now, think of the people who are suffering. Oh, roll the sleeves, literally. And let's work, dig, seeking the good, feeling the good, visualizing the good, molding the good with all the resources we can. Meaning, what can I do to help others? What can I do to make their lives more pleasurable, more livable, more less lonely? Many people are feeling loneliness nowadays. Loneliness, right? And Rita de Cassia, welcome, welcome. She's saying, sending good thoughts and love to our mind is good energy to our body. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Hello, Felipe and Tanya Stewart. Welcome, welcome. Antonio Henrique, you're welcome as well. So. Here we have, can we do a therapeutic test here, a quiz? Are we these beautiful believers who love these teachings, who wake up and don't do much? Don't tell me, please, because we are not the judges, but we are facilitating each other's progress here. Let us think about this. Am I like that? Can I, can I live with the good? We are, he's talking about reincarnation, Jesus. He's saying, go back to the earth. So if you say, oh, this planet earth, I'm not of this planet. <laughs> and you say, okay, test if we are or not of this planet. Are we able to be here with the good and the bad, the just and the unjust, the ignorant and the wise, the poor and the rich, distributing the goods that you store up? Uh, no. So you are there uh, from the earth. That's the planet that we need. Because when we're not from the earth and more evolved planets, we can fulfill these tasks much more easily. Look at Mother Teresa. Look at Dr. Bezerra de Menezes. Look at many other spirits, including the master of all masters, Jesus. He was able to come to live with the good and the bad, the just and the unjust, the beautiful and the ugly, right? And he was able to distribute the goods. Return, my friend. Return to the world from where you came. And what is the command of Jesus? Pass all the treasures. Pass all the treasures. That you kept in the sanctuary of your heart to the workshop of your hands. 
very straightforward. This message shows us Jesus' kindness in his body language, in his visitation to this man. He's never going to judge us. He's never going to come to you and say, bad boy, bad girl, never. But he's going to say, like a good teacher, go back, do your homework, go back, study for the exam, succeed, help your friends. The good teacher, the good educator is going to give us more opportunities. Never going to say, oh, well, come with me in spite of it all. Let's go to the next step. No, we need to be prepared. It's not about privileges. Hmm? So what is the ultimate question here for us today? Am I like this believer? Admirable, as Jesus says. You see, he always says the good. Happy devotee who is always in excitement. We need to watch out. If spiritist events come and go and we're like, oh, and then we go home like, oh, it's over. Instead of going home and saying, yay, now it's my turn. I'm going to practice. I'm going to spread and multiply. I'm going to share this good news with everybody. We can't be butterflies. You prefer to be a butterfly or a bee? Because the butterflies, they fly on the flowers, but they don't make honey. I know, they may spread the pollen out for the multiplication. But the bees can do both. Not only they go there and spread out the pollen of the flowers around, but they also make honey which is nourishment, not only for themselves as a species, but even for us as humans. What do you prefer, to be a butterfly of spiritist events? Oh, so beautiful. Or a bee. You go there, you enjoy it, and then you go and make honey to nourish the souls of people in your life. Right? Like Sister Dulce, Rita de Cassi is reminding us. There are so many people like this. Only God knows. How many devoted lives around the world, anonymous to us, but well known to their communities, spreading the good news while making honey. You want to be a bee or a butterfly? Friends, when we see you tomorrow, we're going to study chapter 20. But because it's going to be the weekend and I need it for something special, I can't be here live, but I'll be recording and releasing both videos at 11 p.m. Saturday and Sunday for you. Okay? 40 nights with the Promise Consoler asking us, you want to be a butterfly or a bee of Christ? A big hug on all of you. And let's stay tuned. Working, that's the only tool for us to build a solid home in our hearts. A kiss and a hug. Let's stay together. Little bees of Christ.